In this video, I'm going to talk about the ever-changing weather climate in your van. The moisture in your van can pose a real health problem. I see in a lot of people's YouTube videos when they're talking about something else, I'm seeing a lot of untreated, unfinished wood. Often in the garage area of their van, I see two by fours, untreated raw two by fours, which are commonly made from pine, a softwood that really will absorb moisture. And it, no matter where you are in the United States, if you're cooking in your van and heating your van, you're introducing moisture and wood is like mold food. Mold will grow very quickly in those close surfaces between the wood or the surface between the wood and your wall. If you don't have air circulation to keep your van nice and dry, you'll end up with mold growth. So it's very important to seal all the wood surfaces on your van. Today I'm going to talk about different sealants for that type of wood. We need something low cost that will seal the wood in an ever-changing climate inside the van. This isn't fine furniture. We just want to avoid mold growth and moisture in all of the wood that's inside the van. There are several common wood finishes that you can use, including polyurethane, Danish oil, and a spar of varnish. Polyurethane is a very hard surface. It must be sanded in between coats to give you a good finish. But remember, we're not looking for fine furniture finish here, so you might skip that part. Danish oil includes a stain, so you can colorize the wood at the same time you're putting a finish on it. And the one I think will work out best is this urethane finish. It's a spar varnish. Now, this is a low-cost spar varnish. In the boating world, there are some more expensive, higher quality spar varnishes that would do a better job for wood in a marine environment. So today I'm going to test on several different types of finishes. So I've gotten five blanks of birch plywood, I should say six blanks of birch plywood, and I'm going to apply a different finish to each one. And then I'm going to subject them to some testing to see which one's durable, flexible, and most importantly, will stop moisture from being absorbed in the finish. So I'm going to go through each one of these one at a time. I'm going to pull it, the camera in closer so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, for this experiment, what we're trying to do is find out which one of these is going to seal the wood against moisture and be flexible and durable for our van build. So I'm going to use these pieces of three quarter inch birch plywood and seal them on all sides against moisture. So the first one I'm going to do will be this Danish oil. Now Danish oil contains a varnish and a stain together. So I'm going to brush it on and let it soak. Now Danish oil, you can just soak the wood and after it absorbs as much as possible, then wipe off the excess. I'm going to do the edges.
and I'll put at least two coats on all sides for each one of these to be sure that I'm sealing the surface completely. So that's one side and the sides. Now for number two, number two, I decided that for number two I was going to do the Danish oil and let it cure and then put the spar urethane on second. So this is number two. So I'll start out with the Danish oil and then I'm going to have to let it cure and dry for at least a day after I get both coats of this Danish oil on the three quarter inch birch plywood. And we'll see how stained my hands end up when I'm done with this. I know I should go get some gloves, which I think I will do in a moment. Yeah, we're soaking it. Remember, this isn't fine furniture. We're just trying to seal the wood. Okay, so that's these two. We're going to let them soak in as much of that as possible. And <clears throat> let's see if I can go on to number three. Number three, I decided, would be lacquer. But I'm going to wait because I just have spray lacquer right now. I want to get some lacquer, a quart of lacquer, to do that. So we're going to put number three off to the side here. I'll come back and get that one done a little bit later. Number four, spar urethane. Okay, spar urethane, clear gloss or clear satin. Really doesn't matter. Let's go with the clear gloss and see if I do kind of a messy job. We'll see if it uh, it's still glossy or shows lots of imperfections. Clear gloss. Okay, have to make a little room here and make sure I got the right one. Spire urethane on number four. Okay, let's put on this little blue glove. Then what I'm going to do is when this is done, we're going to find out how flexible each one of these is. And we're also going to see if they will absorb water. Which one of these will absorb water? So I will weigh each one. submerge them in water, let them dry for a specific amount of time, and then weigh them and see if one of them has absorbed water. Oh yeah. Doing an adequately messy job. Four. Number five is going to be polyurethane. 
Now polyurethane definitely needs to be stirred and not shaken because polyurethane easily gets bubbles and we don't want those bubbles in the finish. But again, this is not fine furniture, we're just trying to seal the wood. And I'm going to use a different brush. Okay, so now, make sure I got the right number. Number five is polyurethane. Number six is our control. Number six will have no finish at all. Boy, definite difference in the way these flow on the wood. You can see this polyurethane, you can see the bubbles in it because I'm using this foam brush. Wouldn't use a foam brush if I was doing fine furniture. So that's number five. Number six will remain raw wood. Number three I'll do later when I get the lacquer and I'll brush the lacquer on there. Now to review these very quickly, number one has the Danish oil on it. Number two is going to have the Danish oil and then after it dries and cures for at least 24 hours after the second coat I'll put two coats of spirourethane. Danish oil is a varnish and stain in one. It soaks into the wood and its claim to fame is that it hardens within the wood. So that might work all by itself. The spar urethane, which is going to go on top of it, is similar to polyurethane, but spar urethane is more flexible. There's more oils in it, and it's designed for use in the marine industry. So I really have my bet that the spar urethane will do a better job because it remains more flexible and it's, it's not as brittle. Polyurethane is more like putting a coat of plastic on. Very, very durable finish, much harder finish, but it's also much more brittle. So although I think it will perform similar to the spar urethane, I don't think it's going to expand and contract with the wood, and that will cause it to crack, and that could be a problem. This one I'm saving to put the lacquer on, Lacquer is really nice because you don't need the sand between the coats. When you put the second coat of lacquer on, it'll actually melt the other coat, the first coat, and those two will bond together. You can't do that with polyurethane. Polyurethane needs to be sanded so that the second coat has something to grip to. That's not true with lacquer. Now lacquer also is a rather brittle finish so I don't think it's going to perform as well but this is all an experiment to find out what I'm going to do in my van so I'll take care of the rest of these and I'll be back after I've got them all coated and finished and we'll start our test okay so I have finished coating each one of these each one has gotten two coats of the finish except for this last one which is the bare wood so 
number one is coated only with Danish oil. So we're going to weigh that one. That one is 185 grams. Number two is the Danish oil and then coated with the spar urethane. That one's 190 grams. So 10 grams, I guess, of spar urethane. Number three is the lacquer. Number three is 180 grams. Number four is only the spar urethane. 180 grams. Number five is the polyurethane finish. And that's 190 grams. And plain, no finish at all. Just plain piece of three quarter inch birch plywood is 185 grams. Now we know the weights of each one of these. Now we're going to submerge them in water and see how much moisture each one of these absorbs and compare that with their dry weight. Now to do that, I'm simply going to fill this container with water and put a weight on them to submerge them and hold them below the surface of the water and I'll do that for 24 hours and then we're going to let them dry and we'll weigh them again. Okay so we got our bucket, I got a brick, I'm going to use that to hold down the pieces of wood and we're going to put them equally submerged in water, wait a day and see how much water that they absorb. So pour the water in this container. And we're going to fill this thing up. place our test pieces in. from this brick. We're going to keep them in there. We're going to separate them out so they're not touching each other. And this is going to sit here just like that for 24 hours. We're going to leave those submerged and then we're going to weigh them and see how much water that they absorb. Now, my original Tupperware container sprung a small leak, so I thought. So I put another larger container under it, but that leak apparently must have been some water I spilled because it didn't fill with water and this didn't lower at all. So now I'm going to remove this brick and take these pieces out dry them off a little bit with a paper towel as evenly as possible and we're going to weigh them. Okay. 
get this water out of the way. And we'll bring in our scale. Pat these down, get any surface water off of them. You can tell that one just color a little. All right, so let's see. Number one, number one, we gotta zero this out. Let's see what number one weighs. Number one comes in at 240 grams. Let's see, where's number two? Number two. Number two comes in at 220 grams. Four. Number three comes in at 235 grams. Number four comes in at 190. Number five comes in at 200. And number six comes in at 245. Now we'll put that on a chart here and we'll compare and see how much each one increased in weight by being submerged in water for a little bit over 24 hours. So another thing that I did is I placed many, many coats of polyurethane and spar varnish on these two pieces of door skin. So on this thin plywood, my idea here is to bend these and see if one of them is more brittle than the other. So number seven has a polyurethane. So let's see what happens here. I have no idea what's going to happen. Well, that snapped right in half. Very clean. Let's see this one. This one, number eight, is the spar urethane. Wow, that had a little more give to it. Let me see if I can scrape some layers off of this. to see how flexible this would be on the surface. Now this is a lot of thick coats but it's been given more than three days. More than three days to dry and cure. That's pretty flexible. That is the that's number seven. That is the polyurethane. Let me check this one out. This one is the spar urethane. Oh yeah. The spar urethane is much more flexible.
that's flexible but this is flexible enough that it actually will wrinkle so flexibility in my very unscientific test I would say the spar urethane wins that competition and that is hard and dry and this is dry but it, it has more friction to it it's not as hard a surface there's more oils in this yeah hmm. all of these pieces of wood were finished and after they thoroughly dried they were placed outside Florida weather. The sun hit them, the rain hit them. It was rather cool during this two week period. And all of them seemed to do well except for the unfinished. Number six, no finish, seems to have some mold growth. This is what you don't want happening in your van. All the other finishes seem okay. This is just the Danish oil. You can tell that's starting to deteriorate. Lacquer is not too bad. You can see that the lacquer actually act as a solvent and took away a little of the Sharpie pen. The lacquer also has quite an odor. Um, so that's kind of hard to deal with. But as far as the um, polyurethane or spar varnish goes, both of those worked well, very well. If I had my choice between either one of them, I would choose the spar urethane. The spar urethane didn't contain bubbles when I brushed it on, and the polyurethane did. The spar urethane is going to be a little softer finish, but it's supposed to be flexible, and it'll probably be more durable. The bottom line is, I highly recommend using either polyurethane or the spar urethane to finish your wood and seal it if it's going to be inside your van. If you could get one of these on clearance, one of them was a better deal than the other, then that's the one I'd choose. Because remember, this channel is the frugal factor. And as far as I'm concerned, they both work great. But this, bare wood, could be a health problem. So, again, it's my two cents, my little crazy experiment. Hopefully this helps somebody out. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it interesting, please give it the thumbs up, subscribe, let other people know about it, and if you do those things, I'll keep producing videos. Thank you for watching.